hi, I'm Susan with Prairie Point Quilt and Fabric Shop in Lenexa, Kansas, and uh, I want to do a video here, a uh, little tutorial for you on how to make a string quilt. So it's really easy to do. I'm going to have a free pattern on our website for you, but um, you could probably make it just off of what I show you here today. So the, the idea of this is a foundation piece, and we're going to piece the strips of fabric. These are strings. You just cut your fabric up into little strings. Uh, sew them onto a muslin base. And it's a great quilt for using up your scraps. If you uh, have a, a stash that you want to cut up or just scraps that you don't know what else to do with or how else to use them, not much good for a lot of things, but too good to throw away. This is the way to um, use them is in a string quilt. So I'm going to set that aside. All right, I'm going to show you some of the um, things that we'll be doing here. So these are the little blocks. And um, starting out with little six inch ones here. So you can do all kinds of fun things. And then look, you just take fabrics from lots of different fabric collections that you have and put them together into one block. And they um, just come together real nice. This is a very old technique and it was made, um, I don't know how many years ago people started to make these, probably even in the 19th century. But uh, I want to show you this one here that somebody made on newspaper. We're going to do it on muslin, but this was made on newspaper. And then the idea would be to pull the paper away, but it's an uncompleted one. This is from 1949. It has a date on it. So that's a, an old block. And I'll show you some pictures that came out of some magazines probably 15, 20 years ago or so. But these are antique quilts in the magazines. So you can see how people use them. I'm sure then it was just a great way to use up scraps from making clothing or um, clothing that wasn't worn anymore. Here's one where it shows uh, this antique quilt has sashing in between the blocks. And um, here's another one that shows much larger blocks put together. And here's kind of a, a kaleidoscope effect type of block. And see how wonky that is. And it looks like a really modern quilt, but it's actually an antique one. So um, another thing I'll show you here is after you make your blocks and sew them, uh, fill them up, trim them up, then you will put them together into a larger block. So I like to call these a little block unit. And then this is the block that you will have. So in the instructions that I've written, um, I refer to this as the block with all four of them sewed together. And you can do it in any color way you want. Just pick out, you know, whatever you think, things that you love. And that, that's the fun thing about it. And it's a great way to put a lot of fabrics from your previous quilts all into one uh, quilt. And then you have kind of a little memory of things that you've made in the past. And um, here's one that's made with a much larger block. And um, that's the one, the demo that I'm going to do for you today is the larger block. Okay, so we'll start out with a muslin foundation for these blocks. And it'll take several yards of muslin. Um, I recommend washing the muslin first so that it is uh, cut, uh, shrink, shrunk up and pressed out. And then um, just have a whole stack of muslin squares that you're going to use. And if you know how big you're going to make it, then just um, cut that many squares. And if not, then you know you can just go back and cut more later, get some more muslin. And then we're going to cut some strips. So if you're cutting from your scraps you have at home, you might have scraps of all different shapes and sizes and everything. So this is a good way to use them, but they might end up making kind of a mess. If you have little squares left over from a quilt, if you have leftover half square triangles, um, they're great in this, and I'll show you how pretty soon. And my little pile might start out really neat at first, but as I get going and using them and pulling out of it, it usually becomes just one big jumbled up pile. So this is uh, some scraps I've had for a while, but this is what I'm working on today. So as you can see, I have my pile of scraps on top, but I left a nice, neat little um, collection here for you. So I'll usually just cut up all my strips. And this is cut from uh, yardage, so it's not cut from my stash or scraps that I have at home. 
So that's why it looks even neater than it, you know, it might be if you did it from your scraps. But I'll lay them out in here, and then as I begin pulling them out and using them, and I'll have smaller ones left over, um, it gets to be quite a little jumbled up mess. So I'm going to put that back in there. Here's some used strips that I have that I will use again pretty soon. So for my blocks, I'm going to start out with a square just like this. And I'm going to take one of my strips out of my little box. I'm going to lay it right there down the middle. Okay. And I usually have the center. Uh, I don't have to have the center, but I usually make sure that the corner is well covered. I don't want to start out with it with the, the edge right at corner to corner or even where the seam line is going to be because that will create extra bulk in those areas when you sew one block to another. And so then I'm going to put this one right on top of there and I'm going to sew right across there. Now you can trim that off now before you sew or you can wait until after you sew. So that goes on there and then uh, here's an example of the stitching line on there. Okay, so then I'm going to press that back like that and I'm going to do that on the iron with the iron right now. Bring that over here. And I want to make sure that I press it all the way over. All right. Don't want any little bumps in there. So I'm going to take that and then I'm going to take another piece, to take a long one out of there, and I'm going to lay it on the other side and sew it. All right. So that's the next step. And then it will look like, let's see, it'll look like this one here. So I've got two st strips sewed on. Now, what I do is I'll sew one strip on one side, then on the other side, and then I'll go over to the iron. And that saves a step to all the way over to the ironing board, or wherever your iron might be. Um, so I'm going to press that out. Actually, it doesn't hurt to set your seam first. Press that one out. So it's both nice and smooth. And then I'm going to take another strip. And okay, that one's not quite long enough, so I'm going to have to find a longer one because I'm afraid that won't get caught in there. So, um, say we put two of them on there. I got two more on. I'm going to press. Press that down, press that over, press that over like that, okay, and I'm going to go all the way to the edge and just keep going. And this is where your um, leftover half square triangles in your scraps might be helpful or if you have a square that you can cut in, in uh, into corners, triangle corners, they would be useful there as opposed to using other strips that's going to waste more fabric. But, you know, either way, either way you want to do that. Okay, and then I have um, a, another one here. Okay, these are my finished ones. So what I'm going to do here is show you what it looks like when you're all done, when you have all of your pieces on there and um, goes all the way out to the corners. The muslin is completely covered up. So we're going to take a ruler and the square ruler is probably the most helpful and easiest to use for that. So I'm going to cut these into nine and a half inch squares. Um, I don't remember if I told you that my muslin squares are 10 inches, whereas the little ones I showed you at the beginning were cut seven inches. Okay, so I'm going to look at this, and I'm not going to cut it on this side because I want to be sure and get all my muslin in. So I'm going to turn that over, and you probably can't see it because the um, thread blends in, but there's all these stitching lines on here where these are sewed on. And just um, while I'm thinking of it, the thread that you use for this, it's a great way to use up any leftover thread you have. If you have colors of thread that you don't really have any other use for. Um, use those. If you have bobbins that are half full and you wish that co color wasn't on that bobbin, this is a great time to use up all those different 
odds and ends of threads and bobbins that you have. Okay, I'm going to put the ruler right here on the muslin square. And I'm, this is a 10 and a half inch ruler, but um, I'm gonna have two of my sides right here. The nine and a half inch lines are right within the muslin square. So I'm gonna take my ruler, cutter, cut that across there. There's my little scraps. I'm gonna turn this around. I'll lay this on the nine and a half inch line here. Cut the other two sides. If you have a nine and a half inch square ruler, that's ideal too. Get that quite. Okay, turn it over, and it's fun to see how these just magically turn out to be beautiful blocks. So, look, looking like this, they look kind of not really ugly because the fabric's so beautiful, but um, just don't look the same until you cut them up. So I'm going to show you that again. here, back there a little bit, this up here, one more here, so no matter what size you're doing, it's all the same process. Another one. You can do this with your regular six and a half by 24 inch ruler. Um, it just is easier to do with a square ruler. Put that on here. Get it all lined up. And all these beautiful blocks. Okay, and then when you're done with that, you will end up with a whole bunch of little scraps like this. And don't just toss these aside. You can use these again in little places like in the corners. If you have to put something on there, um, that'll come back and just do your corner nicely um, when you have to get to those areas. Um, okay, so let's go on to the squares that I have here. And so when you get these all put together, you will lay them out on the table or on the, on the floor, or a big table if you have one. And um, actually you will s put together your blocks first. So I'm gonna sew four of these together, I'll lay them out, and you don't have to do a lot of looking at them and deciding which ones you go together. Um, they're probably gonna look great. And one thing about it is it's, it's nice to have these seams that don't come together. These don't line up, like some patterns will have you make these types of quilt blocks where everything's lined up. It's not really a string quilt. Um, they're just cut into strips and made real symmetrical. This is supposed to be a little wonky and I think that adds to a lot of the charm of it. So some of the things like um, this one here, both these corners don't look alike. Got this one a little too close in the corner, that's fine. It won't, won't be symmetrical perfectly and that's okay. Another thing that you can look for in these is when you do something like this and let's see here and here. So one thing I might do avoid doing is putting these two next to each other because that's really going to stand out in the quilt. There's a big V in there. So I'll just flip this around. It's not quite that way or I could put another one up there. Okay, let's see, that'll go more like that. Put this one over here. If you have seams coming too close together in the center, turn it around or move these around, get you another block or something like that so you don't have a lot of seams collected right there in the center of the block. All right, after you do that, you will sew two of these together, two here and then across there, but, but you're gonna press your seams open as you go because of the foundation base here, you're not gonna have uh, problems with seams being not strong in there. So go ahead and press them open. That really reduces bulk because you have all those edges there, um, spreads that bulk out and that will make a nice smoother quilt block for you. Okay, so now I wanna show you a 
couple other things. Um, as you get to making these, I usually make these 10 or 12 at a time. So what I'll do is um, start doing something like this. I'll start uh, chain piecing them. So I'll sew, uh, I'll lay a strip on the middle of one, sew my first strip on, go to the next one and do it again and again and again until I have a chain of about 10 or 12 of these. Okay, then I'll cut it off, cut them apart, and then I'll go back and I'll sew another piece on the other side and do that to all 10 of them. Then I will take them all to my ironing board and press them all out like that very securely and then just start um, going to each side again and re repeating that process. Then when they're all done and cut up, I will um, start another 10 of them and do that again. It kind of breaks it up, but I don't feel like this is very boring to make. It's just so fun to see how every block comes together. The more fabrics you have, the more fun it can be and the more variety you're going to have in uh, placing your blocks out there. If you only had 10 or 12 fabrics, it would be a, probably a very different look than if you have. I have 24 fabrics here, but I'm going to show you some quilts that have even more than that. So what I've done here is uh, made a, these with a collection of fabrics. So these are all Tilda fabrics. They're not all from the same line of Tilda, but they are all Tilda. And they, they go together very well, and it is fun to mix them up that way. So what I've done is cut some fat quarters of those, and this is what's available, and you'll have all these pretty different uh, fabrics to choose from to cut up your strips. So again, just cut up your strips. The strips will be cut anywhere from one and a quarter to two and a half inches. Um, I would have fewer one and a quarter and fewer two and a half and have most of them kind of in between. But you can um, adjust those as you go along. If you feel like you got too many wide ones in there, move your strip over a little bit so that um, you will have a wider seam in there and then you can make it narrower. You can even place it on there a little wonky so that you have wonky shaped strips in there. I don't know if there's any of these are like that. but Okay, so we do have bundles for that if you're interested in something like that. And I want to show you some of the quilts I have here. So this one is one of the first ones I've made. This is with the six inch blocks. So this has a lot of fabrics in it that just coordinate, but they don't really all coordinate. You wouldn't always put these together in a quilt, but for a string quilt, you can do that. You can get away with it. And it uses up your, your uh, scraps. And um, people will do these cut up all their strips so make a quilt and they don't even notice a dent in their their uh, scraps because you have so many of them but it does use quite a bit you'll use six to eight yards of fabric to put these together in your scraps the bundles here are going to have um, six and a half yards in them and they'll make a you know probably close to a twin size quilt so I, what I've done on this one was quilted it together with straight line stitching and um, just went back and forth all the way across about a half inch from the seam and then I wanted more um, in there to hold it together so I tied it in the centers with pearl cotton. So each block has a tie in it to hold it together. And then you just find a fun backing and put your binding on and you do not have to quilt that yourself that way. This one was quilted on a long arm and this is made with the larger blocks. So this has a lot of K Facet, Amy Butler prints, Modas, and Michael Miller and fun things like that that come together. And um, you know again it can just be kind of a great memory of what you have used and made in the past with your different script scraps and you can even maybe exchange with friends too. Let's see what's there. So um, I hope you have enjoyed this video and have fun making this quilt. Um, 
it's it's a, the one thing I like about it is kind of a no-brainer type thing. You don't have to do a lot of thinking and planning and math and worrying about if you're doing the wrong thing or not much ripping out on this. Um, just want to make sure your tension is right when you do it and press your seams to the sides before you go on to the next one. I find that finger pressing isn't good enough. You'll have little lumps and bumps in there and uh, that's not desirable. So thanks for watching and we'll be doing some more videos for you later.